So this brings us to Pompey and Vesuvius. Now, Pompeii is, of course, incredibly famous. It's the city that on August 24th of 79 CE was buried by Mount Vesuvius. And this is right around the transition from the Republic to the Empire, even though we can pinpoint a date where that transition politically takes place, culturally it takes a little bit longer. People take some time getting used to it. Also, just because we know that it's the beginning of the empire doesn't mean that they knew it was the beginning of an empire. Uh, Caesar Augustus will play some games to make it look like it's still a republic, but that's another story. So, August 24th, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupts actually buries two cities. It buries Pompeii and Herculaneum, both differently. Herculaneum was about, I want to say Herculaneum was about two miles from Vesuvius, and it gets hit with what's known as a pyroclastic flow. In other words, an ash cloud that goes up and then collapses under its own weight and comes down the mountain at incredible speed and temperature. And they're hit with the pyroclastic flow at about 2500 degrees Fahrenheit enough to melt metal and what it does is it buries the city and blows up their brains those that are still in Herculaneum there's about 30 people that we found basically they wouldn't have felt anything they would have been deceased very rapidly later that night Pompeii falls victim to a pyroclastic flow and Pompeii's further away. It's about five miles away. So the flows kind of take some time to get there. A lot of people can be evacuated. But at the end of the day, people still die. And the entire city is buried in ash. By the way, the city built on the site of Herculaneum, where people's heads exploded, is Naples. Do not move to Naples. This is Vesuvius, and here we see Pompeii in the foreground. And you notice most of it only goes up to a certain level. That's because it was buried in that much ash. Uh, depending where you are in the city, anywhere from 10 to 25 feet. And that ash preserves everything in the city. The Romans will never rebuild Pompeii. And in fact, the Romans won't rebuild Herculaneum either, that gets rebuilt a little bit later on. One of the other interesting things about this, other than preserving Roman life and exactly how the Romans lived in a way that we don't have anywhere else in the empire, is at Pompeii we have these bodies, and maybe you've seen these. Uh, and people think that these are actual people's bodies, but they're not. When they were excavating the site in the 19th century and earlier they were finding these voids these oddly shaped voids in the ash and someone at one point decided you know what I want to find out what was in these let's pour some plaster into it and find out and when you do you find out that those voids are all bodies or organic things sometimes it's a loaf of bread or something but you have dogs you have people uh, any number of different things and that's where we get these bodies from Pompeii and Pompeii gets hit by a cooler pyroclastic flow so people actually suffocate and then cook which is why you get some odd muscular odd body forms uh, here that you don't get at Herculaneum where people are basically incinerated but one other thing to keep in mind is Pompeii is a vacation town so it's sort of like Lake Geneva or uh, maybe some of the cities in Florida where people primarily go there to vacation. There isn't a lot of permanent population in Pompeii. So we start by looking at the amphitheater, and this is what the amphitheater would have looked like. It looks a lot like a smaller version of the Colosseum. And actually seats 20,000 people, which is more than double the population, the permanent population of Pompeii. And here you would have been seated by rank. Uh, the slaves, the furthest away, 
the wealthier people down towards the front, usually with the first few rows allowed for a little bit lower classes because you don't want things flying up into the crowd and hurting someone who has a lot of money. And this is made primarily of concrete. So the entire structure that you see is concrete and that would have been covered in marble. And this would have contained gladiatorial combat, wild animal hunts, various other wild animal games where maybe you put a bear uh, in there up against, say, a lion and see who wins. And, of course, the bear wins because the lions just can't win a game to save their lives. Now, what's interesting here is we also have this painting, and this is a mural that's depicting a riot uh, that happened around the amphitheater a few years before the eruption. And it does show a couple of interesting elements that we don't think of otherwise. First of all, we have this awning that ran over the amphitheater. It would have come down on a series of ropes that would have run across the amphitheater, and then you would have had this awning kind of running around like this with an opening in the middle. That was to block the sun. And it's sort of the world's first retractable roof. We also see this element of history going on. So inside, at the time, we have gladiatorial combat. We can tell by their form of dress. But we also have people fighting surrounding it, uh, both inside and outside the amphitheater, which shows that the amphitheater was a center of civil life at the time and it gives us historical evidence of how it was used so this will become a very common element that we'll see in roman cities more specifically later in rome 